Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on Superman Lower Season 2. Today we're going to be doing my review for Episode 4, titled The Inverse Method. So, if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. So this episode was definitely very interesting. I've liked all the episodes so far, as per usual. There's a couple of nitpicks, but... I think this episode explained a lot of the questions that I had in the last couple of episodes. As I've explained on my live stream last week with Eric, along with my review, I was a bit confused about what exactly was going on, like who was this Ali person? Well, it turned out in this episode that Ali was the person in charge of the cult, and we got more explanation about what was going on with Lucy. Again, I have my very strong thoughts on Lucy because, you know, I have that connection to Supergirl and what happened in the past with Lucy, but this episode definitely did a better job of kind of making me understand exactly what was going on. Also, before we go into the episode and start reviewing and breaking it down you guys should note that superman lois is on a break for two weeks it's going to come back in three tuesdays time and that's where you're going to see the return of it and obviously in the meantime i'm going to be making videos i've actually posted a poll on my community tab asking you guys for any questions or theories you want me to answer and kind of dig into especially while we're on this break it can be related to superman lois the flash or anything else because the flash is coming out very soon also, there was a couple of comments in regards to maybe a Supergirl crossover happening on Superman Lois in the near future, and we're going to be breaking that down, but in a separate video, so don't worry about videos, not going to go away in this two-week break. But for now, let's go ahead and start at the beginning of the episode. So we flash back to five years ago, and this is where we see Superman Lois's Lucy Lane, and I say Superman Lois's Lucy Lane because... Obviously with Crisis and everything, they've taken the liberty to reboot the character to completely retcon everything that happened on Supergirl, and so she's not that same version of Lucy that we knew and that dated James in the past. They've completely retconned that, and instead she never worked for the DEO, and she was involved with this kind of cult led by this alley person, who we meet also at the start of the episode, but in this flashback we get to see Lois, as Lucy leaves the Kent's house, obviously this is back in Metropolis, not in Smallville, and so she moves out to try and build her life, and this is where they talk about Ali, although Lois calls her a parasite, and so they have a screaming match between the two of them, it's a pretty good scene, although I feel like, you know, all the scenes that we had with Lucy in this episode were literally just them screaming, but I understand where that frustration, where that anger comes from, especially from this new set of circumstances that they've set up with Lucy and her past, and the way that she blames Lois for, you know, their mum walking out when they were younger, and lots of other things, including that article that basically took Ali down, which was one of Lucy's only people that she kind of trusted and had in her life, and so she blames her for that as well, and that's why she does the podcast in this episode. And so the reference of Ali being a parasite is a clear reference to what she is in the comics. She's actually a version of Parasite, the supervillain. And so I'm not sure if that's actually going to go ahead, but all the specific references seem to hint towards maybe her becoming Parasite, or maybe someone in her cult becoming Parasite, because that is the effect that she gives on people. And so... I'm curious to see if that actually goes down the way that I kind of think it might go down. However, I wouldn't be surprised if they don't actually go down that path and they just keep it very human and just keep her as a cult leader rather than like a supervillain or something because, you know, they have the Bizarro storyline. And yeah, Ali is definitely the villain for Lois' storyline, but I don't know if they're gonna, you know, make Lois fight a supervillain. So then we go back to the present day and we have the podcast woman who meets... Lois in the diner in Smallville, but instead of being Lucy, it's in fact Ali. And so this is the moment where I realized, oh, Ali is that podcast lady. I had no idea. I thought Ali was just an elusive person that they were referencing in the last couple of episodes, but it turns out to be it's her. And so, you know, this is one of the instances where I was like, ah, like I kind of get it now. And I feel like I'm in the know, and I feel like this kind of explanation was needed a bit earlier on because they've been referencing all that happened to Lucy and Ali for like the last three episodes, and we literally had no direct reference saying, look, this is this person, this is this person, this is exactly what happened. And obviously there is mystery, and mystery is good, and there is still more mystery going on as to what Lois actually knows and isn't telling Chrissy, 
which culminates at the end of the episode with Chrissy potentially switching sides, but we'll get to that later. But basically Lois calls out the inverse society as a kind of religion or a cult and she blames her for brainwashing the misguided, who obviously the misguided is Lucy as well as all those other followers of her cult. And for a while with Lois's article she was able to take her down, but now Lucy is going to go on the podcast, she does go on the podcast later in this episode, and Ali attempts to cancel her, like she says in her own words, you're going to be the one that's going to get cancelled. So obviously they're trying to bring in like real world problems where, you know, all these celebrities are like, oh yeah, people are going to get cancelled, like haha, if you say something bad online you're going to get cancelled, like, you know, is that kind of boomer culture I guess where they take all of this so seriously and they blame younger people for all of their own personal problems where they're saying bad stuff online and they get cancelled like what's the big deal you did that to yourself anyway so it's a big deal in the world of the internet and in real life right now and so it's clear why they're doing this story and they just found a way to link it to Lucy to someone from the Arrowverse's past and obviously they've completely changed her but we'll get into that more later in the video because Lucy doesn't show up at the start of the episodes apart from the flashback until later in the present day. And so at this point we go over to the Bizarro storyline. Bizarro is using his fire breath, he's trying to destroy his necklace. Again we don't have a specific exact explanation for what this necklace does, but it's clearly important and we continue to see the two sides, but this time we start from Bizarro's perspective as he kind of starts to flash and see through Clark's eyes as he sits in his Smallville house with his kids, and this is what triggers him to try and find him because he realizes where he is and so he goes after him. But just before Bizarro shows up in Smallville, we go to Superman's perspective as the kids listen in on Lois listening to Lucy's podcast, which has just been released that morning. And so Clark listens to what Lois has to say and makes Lois try and find a way to bring Lucy back to their side because he believes that people can be changed. And so I like these little conversations that we have linking the two stories together because really Clark isn't that involved in the Lucy storyline and Lois isn't involved that much in the Bizarro storyline right now. But before we head back to Bizarro facing off against Superman, let's talk a bit about Lana and Kyle in this episode. So this is really the only bit that we're going to talk about about them. I'm going to kind of condense it just to this couple of sentences that I'm going to say. So with Lana trying to become the mayor of Smallville, obviously this is a very disconnected story from the rest because right now we have like four main stories plus what happened with Jordan at the end of the episode and we'll get to that when we get to it but Lana is trying to be the mayor and basically the old mayor, the current mayor, Mayor Dean is trying to dig up dirt on Lana but also Sarah and obviously this is to do with what Sarah did in her past we get the reference to that in the episode and at the end of the episode we get Kyle who goes to an old bar that he used to frequent at and it turns out he may have been cheating with the bartender and I'm for sure 100% that that is going to come out soon and so in this episode they're just dealing with this like what do we do Kyle wants to go after Dean himself but Lana is like no we don't cross that line we don't go after kids we don't go after their family despite someone like Mayor Dean doing all of this against their family so I do like you know that Lana has this line that she won't cross and Kyle is going to have to try and clean up his mess because there's clearly a lot of stuff that happened whilst he was drinking and obviously now he's sober so he's better and he's fully involved with the family but before he obviously had his problems. So that's kind of the storyline where we're at right now with all of them. And so let's go back to Clark and John Henry Irons as they talk about the farm life, they really like it but at that point Bizarro shows up and so the two of them have a fight, that being Superman and Bizarro, and Bizarro's necklace projects some form of energy that creates a sort of force field around them. However, it has a very specific energy signature which John Henry Irons after the fight is able to track down, but they can only track the energy signature through the DoD's satellites. So Superman goes to Lieutenant Mitch Anderson with the data in order to try and track him down. And so with this, I'm not very convinced on the old theory that we had like even last week that maybe the government is involved with the creation of Bizarro. 
because it doesn't seem that Mitch really knows how powerful he is because two of his super soldiers from the Supermen of America, which they're calling themselves, actually die. So I think it's a bit less likely that the government or the DOD created Bizarro. So who is the actual person in control and who formed him in the first place using Superman's DNA as we have all suspected? Well, I don't think we're going to find out for a while and maybe it is actually something completely different. We'll have to wait and see. But this necklace is somehow draining from Superman or, you know, creating this kind of link between them. However, this is like a thing that Bizarro is trying to destroy throughout the whole episode. So it's clearly important between the connection between the two of them. And maybe that connection is gone with the necklace actually falling off at the end of the episode and Tag takes it away. Obviously Tag is a member of Lieutenant Mitch Anderson's Superman of America. And so I have a theory. Now hear me out on this. Do you think that this necklace draining from Superman is a way for him to kind of become a Clark lookalike? Basically taking everything that makes Clark himself and applying it to Bizarro. Could that be a way? Because you know, a big thing with Bizarro always in the comics is he wants to be like Superman. He isn't in control of his sort of temptations to take down Superman and it seems this version of Bizarro isn't just after killing Superman. Instead, they have this very strong connection and somehow he wants to get rid of that connection between the two of them because they keep on getting these terrible headaches on both sides. So the question is, why did he attack? Is it just a way for him to try and take down Superman so he stops having these headaches? But what do you guys really think is going on with Bizarro? I think there's lots of different possibilities right now, but we don't have like one succinct answer. So Lois goes to the Smallville Gazette and it turns out Ali is based in New Carthage or that's at least where she's having this meeting and so it's revealed that Chrissy was able to go on the dark web and get an invite and so they go to this meeting and the inverse method is the name of obviously the society, the religion, the cult that Ali is in charge of and obviously Lucy is a member of. And so this conference happens in New Carthage and Lucy Lane actually shows up as Lois and Chrissy go to New Carthage to attend the event. And so Lucy and Lois go up to Lucy's room where they have a big, big argument. And actually it turns out Lucy is recording the whole thing and the whole room watches. And obviously Chrissy finds out lots more than she already knew about what happened with Lucy and Lois. And so Lucy blames Lois for driving their mum away despite Lois only being eight. This is just one of the reasons that she is completely annoyed with her and, you know, she hates her for it. But obviously a big thing was the article. And so Lucy saw her other self apparently and she wanted to cross over. That's the specific words they said. So I'm wondering, does this have any link to crisis and maybe seeing an alternate version of herself? like a happy version of herself like we saw on Supergirl. Could that be what is going on? I have no idea. I don't know if those specific words like crossover and other self were implanted for a reason, but that's the idea that I kind of got. I don't know if I'm crazy. I've listened to some other people and I've read online. I don't think many other people brought this up, but I'm going to rewatch it and I'm going to kind of dig into it and if it is in regards to seeing this alternate version of herself before crisis that's going to be very interesting but so Chrissy believes Ali and she doesn't believe Lois because she hasn't revealed every detail and it becomes pretty clear in that meeting once Lois's video goes up that Chrissy is sort of starting to go to the dark side as you would say and so after this whole huge ordeal goes down we have Lois who goes back to Smallville, talks to Clark and updates him about what exactly has been going on and Clark says that he still believes that Lois is going to figure out exactly how to fix what happened between her and Lucy. But that's about it and I wonder at what point we're going to have the proper crossover between the two stories because like I mentioned earlier, Lois isn't really connected to Superman's story right now and same the other way around. So. I'm wondering at what point do we get a kind of Morgan Edge situation where, you know, Lois was tracking down Morgan Edge and investigating him as a journalist and obviously you had Superman taking down all these different new Kryptonians and eventually it was revealed that Morgan Edge wasn't Morgan Edge but in fact was Tal Ro, Superman's brother. But the Bizarro story and the Ali and Lucy Lane story is just two stories in this season 
Also, we have Jonathan, which is going on right now, and we can briefly talk about Jonathan because in this episode, he takes X Kryptonite for the first time and he gets his first kind of insight into what it's like to have Kryptonian powers. Basically, his vision is super enhanced and he becomes ultra aware of his surroundings. And it's revealed by his girlfriend that other people get other symptoms of being a Kryptonian. So like she feels super strong, someone else has super hearing, obviously he has like really good vision and he's able to kind of enhance and see things from far away. And so obviously this is going to come back to bite him in the butt, but it seems it's going to be a way for him to advance himself and be up to the level of the other players who are taking the X Kryptonite already. And now, you know, in his own way, he's going to become better. And Natalie, even in this episode, warns him about taking this stuff because, you know, it's pretty obvious that he's on something. And so, in the meantime, you have Jordan's storyline. He actually has a big moment in a new shop that is owned by some of their friends from school. And so, some kids are trying to steal some alcohol. His freeze breath on the ground. But it turns out that they have CCTV cameras everywhere. And so he realizes, oh crap, like, yeah, I did the right thing, but I'm on camera, I'm going to be exposed. And so it's extremely tense in that moment because we're like, what's going to happen? So he calls his granddad straight away, General Lane, obviously ex-General Lane, and he somehow manages to scrub the footage really, really quick, which is obviously extremely helpful for Jordan, but it teaches him he needs to be much more careful about how he uses his powers and he needs to be more aware of his surroundings. And this leads into what happens at the end of the episode as it's revealed by Jordan that he wants his granddad to train him and be ready to help Superman, help his dad fight against other villains like Bizarro. Because in this episode you have Steel who gets completely obliterated because his suit isn't functioning properly and he gets punched really hard by Bizarro and he ends up in a hospital and pretty much he's just out of action. And so with Jordan having the same superpowers as Superman, and yes, he's not as powerful, at some point he's going to need to train. And I'm surprised that Superman hasn't done that yet. However, it's clear, you know, he's very distracted, he's very busy, he's got to take on Bizarro, he's got all these other things to do. But I think this is a great storyline and I'm looking forward to it. Obviously, there's gonna be some backlash when Superman and Lois find out that Jordan's been trained by their granddad. But I think at one point you're gonna have a big moment where Jordan comes in and saves the day and maybe he is the one that ends up taking down Bizarro instead of Superman or they work as a team, Superman and Superboy, if Jordan eventually becomes Superboy and say gets a suit and cape to finally take down Bizarro once and for all. But let's go back to the DOD because they are able to track down Bizarro who's in Bolivia He's in the middle of nowhere, he's trying to destroy his necklace once again, and this is when he sends his super army to track Bizarro and take him down, and so Bizarro faces off against the Superman of America, as they are now called, and so two of them, who we've seen in the last couple of episodes, are actually killed pretty damn easily. Like, they are not that powerful. Yeah, they might have superpowers, but they aren't trained to the level of Superman or someone who is able to actually pose any sort of threat to Bizarro, who is clearly more powerful than Superman. And we're obviously going to find out the reason why he's so powerful very soon. And Tag is saved by Superman, but then Superman is saved by Steel, who gets knocked away and he's injured pretty damn severely. But Tag is able to get his hands on Bizarro's chain, and I wonder if this connection is going to be like temporarily breached. Is that the reason that Bizarro has been trying to break the necklace so bad? Because that's literally what he's been doing this whole time. Like he isn't even going after Superman. He just shows up and obviously at one point he approached Superman in this episode in Smallville because maybe he just wanted to get rid of him once and for all because he is causing him so much pain. But it seems, you know, the main source of his pain is coming from this chain. And with it being taken away, I wonder what's going to happen next. We didn't get like a proper explanation about that towards the end of the episode, but I reckon in the next couple of episodes we're going to figure out exactly what is going on, who created Bizarro, and what truly is happening with them, and why do they have this connection together. And so the ending of the episode goes back to Chrissy, and so she wants to find out, as she calls Ali, 
what actually happened with Lois and obviously she's going to get that one-sided point of view from Ali but I think Chrissy is going to believe it because she sucked into Ali and what she is promoting because if you think about it Chrissy has had doubts about Lois for a long time despite hiring her and being sort of a sidekick to Lois it's clear that Chrissy has her trust issues and it's just exemplified in this episode and especially in this ending and so it really does seem that Ali is a parasite and she's able to change people and kind of infect their minds and lure them to her side. But that about does it for this video guys, thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, it really helps out. Also subscribe and turn on notifications if you are new to not miss any future videos. And you can click on the top right corner of the screen to watch my latest video. Remember Superman Lois is on a break. It's coming back in three Tuesdays time. So be on the lookout for my video when that episode comes out. That is obviously episode 5. And not long after that The Flash is going to be back. And that's going to be on a Wednesday night starting mid-March. Looking forward to that. And for now, remember we're going to continue making videos so don't go anywhere. But you can click on the top right corner of the screen to watch my latest video. And for now, I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye. I see red.